Wendy, I'm the Tireless Tangler. I want to welcome you back to the 100 Days of Zen Tangle Project 2021. We have made it to day 91, and we are going to be taking on two tangles that I have not done before, and those are, um, one is called Cenabel, and that is by Tricia uh, Ferrone, I think, and she is a CZT, and this one is Septembis, and that is by Hanni Nura Waldberger in Der Schweiz, in Switzerland. So, let's get started. I am not myself completely today. I am struggling with a lot of pain. I think it's the weather and my arthritis, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. So I'm going to play in my sketchbook for just a minute because I want to um, share with you how cool this September's, um, this September's um, tangle is. So uh, what Hanny has done, you will, oh my goodness, stop calling me. Sorry, guys. I can't turn off my phone. I don't know what the problem is. So, uh, and Jane, I saw your question. I will answer that in just a moment, okay? So, Septembis, I think, is probably best recognized in this square grid format. And that is really cool and pretty. And um, so, the way this is formed is you draw your square grid. You put these little dots around the edges. And then you draw an X in the middle. And then you're going to round off each one of these edges so it sort of looks a little bit like a flower petal, okay? And you're going to do that on all four sides. Goodness, sorry about that. <laughs> it's a little stunted, but it's still going to work, you're going to see. And then uh, in the step out, Henny has these um, sparkled lines. And if you're new to tangling and these make you crazy, just uh, draw some, some lines in uh, without the sparkles. It's not going to matter. And these are cool either way, quite frankly. Yeah. Now, at this point, and she fills them all out so that they look like this, okay? So this would be your finished product. Um, she also, in the step out, does Septembis in, uh, in, in an orb by putting a Y shape and then rounding off the edges into little flower petals. Now this one is a little harder, but still not too bad, right? And then she puts the little, the little orbs in the little um, corners, right? Now, the cool thing about this pattern is you can do it in orbs, overlap it, handle it like you would jetties or tipple or printemps or any of those and uh or you can put it in this square grid and this works well in a wonky grid so i did a little bit of a wonky grid over here and then in my loops with my string i put these little versions in here okay so so as I was drawing this, one of the things that I that I itched to do, and so I finally allowed myself to do it, is I itched to put these auras around everything. And so finally, I just let myself do it, but that is not part of the step out. Okay, so <clears throat> Sanibel is a lovely pattern, and let me step that out on the tile, okay? You guys are going to love Sanibel. And hi, Darcy. Now, before I do that, let me just address a question that we had in chat. And so Jane has asked in chat if, if I think that uh, Fife 
that's a pattern we did a few days ago, is a tangulation of bales. And after thinking about that for a moment, um, they're both based on a square grid, and uh, they both sort of have those uh, little rice shapes happening. But I think, um, I think, I want to, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't think so, in my opinion. I think they're two very different things. But um, maybe some of these other CZTs would have a thought about that. So I'll let you guys discuss that in chat. And uh, I am going to grab my graphite pencil. I'm working on a, a regular um, Zentangle tile today, three and a half inches by three and a half inches, or nine by nine centimeters, okay? I'm just gonna use a graphite pencil, a zero one micron in black, and uh, a tortillon, if I can find it again, and I may use some of my uh, chalk pastels for color, we'll see, okay. So I'm going to make a string today. I know, I'm excited too. I'm going to first, though, draw in a squared off border. I don't wanna put any loops in this one because uh, I want the freedom to do some other things in here. So we'll see. So this is my version of a squared off border. If you want to do the dots in each corner, that is great. Let's take a deep breath. I need one. Oh my goodness. Being in pain, it makes it hard to concentrate. I know you guys know this. So um, I'm going to see if I can't help myself to feel a little bit better by the time we're done, okay? All right, so I think what I want to do, what do I want to do? All right, I know what I want to do. I'm going to put a smaller um, aura in here in the middle. Whoops, and I forgot to block my turntable here. Just a second. Hi, Carolyn from Colorado. And Sue and Darcy and some of the other ones that have snuck in here. All right, so not very straight, but uh, I'm, I was going to say I'm going to live with it, but I probably will try to draw it in a little bit better. We'll see. We'll see. It's this need I have for perfection that I that I am trying really hard to get over. Mm, apparently I'm not trying hard enough. All right, now I have a square that I am happy with. It shouldn't be that way, but there you go. All right. Hi, Lala Art Studio. How are you? If I saw that right. Okay, so, Sanibel. We are going to do Sanibel on the outside around the edge here, and I'm going to do Septembis on the inside. And, uh, you know, on the other hand, I think I'm going to draw in Septembis first, okay? And I'm gonna try to do that neatly. No promises. You know how I am about squares and straight lines and all that, it's, it's not pretty. That's gonna work. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put in a four square grid. So I'm just gonna divide this in half each way. Or in my case, half-ish, right? Okay, the next step 
is to put these cute little orbs in. Take your time. Take some good breaths. Focus on making them nice and neat and the same size, Cindy. <laughs> yeah. And then go to all of your outer corners and repeat. Don't rush. See how nice and neatly you can make these. Sometimes I surprise myself. Sometimes I do not. There you go. Somebody sing. Sing silent. Si see, I never did get to, I never did got a, um, oh, you've got a friend in me. Yeah, that's it. You've got a friend in me. Okay. So um, the next uh, thing we want to do is draw in our X's. Now, my first tip for you today is to make these shorter than you think they should be. Okay. In fact, what you might want to do is put a dot, just a tiny dot, in what you visualize as the center of each one of these. So you've got something to aim at. Of course, I miss it. <laughs> and then aim at your corners. All right. I'm going to go through and do this and keep them shorter than I think they need to be. Or longer. <laughs> Whatever makes me happy. Sometimes I don't get that right. And sometimes I don't. All right, there, okay, here we are. Now, let's put our little petal tops on each, on each section. Now, this is where I struggle. Um, I struggle to get my lines to match up, so I'm going to be really careful. Take a deep breath and let my shoulders relax before I start. Whew. All right, now let's try this. And when I make these, I'm gonna to try to make them a little longer than I think maybe they should be because I made this X shorter, right? They don't all have to be perfect. They don't all have to be exactly alike. It's still gonna look cool. But what you really want are our clear sections here, okay? So you might want to get in your sketch pad and draw a couple of these before you try it on a dial. So don't be afraid to bulge out. And again, you're going to get some varying degrees of interesting things there. It takes some practice to get them even. And clearly, I have not practiced enough. But it's going to be okay. Just take it on out towards the edge. Try to aura that edge as far as your direction goes. And curve back down. All right. So I'm going to have four different shapes and sizes of this, but that's going to be fine, right? It is easier to manipulate this, this X uh, length here 
if you just keep it short and then see what you've got when you're drawing in your little petal things, when you're rounding it off. Like this. Hopefully everybody can see and I'm not in the way. I see, I see chat is saying because we can, so that's always dangerous. Now, um, I love the hatch line look on this. It's one of the reasons I'm drawn to this particular pattern. Um, but um, there are also some things that she did in her step out as variations that I'm really attracted to. And so um, I think maybe I will do one thing with these two and one thing with these other two. So I think over here, whichever side this is going to be, I'm going to do the hatch lines. And I start in the center, and then I curve my sides in towards that center line. And that gives it a nice rounded look. So I am hoping that I have a new niece or nephew or grand niece or nephew today. My nephew Zach and his wife Jamie are having a baby. Well, Jamie's having the baby. I'm sure Zach is going to just worry. So good luck being parents, kids. I remember holding Zach when he was a baby. He had colic really badly as an infant. <clears throat> We could not get him to stop crying. So I'm just sparkling a couple and leaving a couple straight. You can do it how you like. And so this is what you'll have in the end, okay? Isn't this pretty? Now, you guys can imagine that the first thing I wanted to do was make an aura around this, and I'm probably going to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and draw it in the way it's supposed to be first, and then I'll play later. So I'm just going to put my hatch lines in here, too. Once, once again, starting in the center, and then curving the next lines in towards that center line. These kinds of things absolutely don't have to be perfect. These are very forgiving, especially when you get the shading in. So all of us shakers should be happy with this. And that group and certainly includes me. Oops. Eh, it's fine. See, it doesn't have to be perfect. We have got a cat running around, and it has got River all up in arms. I tell you, that is the barkinest dog. I mean, Simba enjoys his howling, but she enjoys barking. She's just a yapper. I don't like yapping. I'm opposed to yapping. That doesn't mean she stops, though. All right. So the other version of this that I really loved is, is she put in, let's see if I can do this. She striped this. and did it like this. Something like this, it's kind of a messy stripe. Now the key to this kind of thing is getting your stripes or your sparkles in the same place on each side, right? <laughs> so, 
you know, keep that in mind. Sometimes you get into the moment and you forget the important stuff. I know I do. Well, there. So like that, and that's really cool, and I love that. So I'm going to... <laughs> oh, chat has devolved, I see. We're talking about Cheech and Chong. I don't want... I don't want... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i love my enders and my zenders and my friends and my frienders y'all are a good bunch well i went a little crazy with this one but it's all right i tried curving these so we're gonna see how that looks Hmm. That'd be better like that. All right. These look like suspenders to me. You know, those things that hold up your pants. Are those called suspenders elsewhere? What do y'all call those in the UK? You know, those things guys use? Hold their pants up. Those straps that go over your shoulders. What are those called in the UK? They're not listening to me. <laughs> it's fine. My feelings aren't hurt at all. They call them braces in the UK? Yeah, I don't know. They call them suspenders? <laughs> Not on your legs, you silly. They hold your pants up. I'm, I'm yelling at Carlito. She's so funny. All right, suspenders are for stockings. Suspenders are for stockings, huh? Well, I suppose they could use suspenders. That isn't what I mean. No, garters are for socks and hose and stockings and such. Suspenders are sort of the same thing, but for pants on men. We're talking about something that men wear. Yeah, they hold your britches up. They hold up your pants. Your trousers. They're elastic bands. They go over your shoulders and they clip to the front of the trousers and the back of the trousers. And they hold your pants up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Braces, Carlito says. Okay, braces it is. We're going to call them braces. All right. Oops. I 
think. Anyway, I lost what I was saying. Anyway, whoops. <laughs> These look like suspenders or braces. Now I'm starting to be sorry I brought it up. I know somebody out there is going, me too. Okay. <laughs> you guys will have to find live chat and read read for yourself what is going on in there with the kids. That's a crazy bunch. I love this version. It's so, so much like a wrapped gift, isn't it? I love it. This one got kind of skinny. Here we go. All right, so they're not all the same, but they're all still pretty, right? So I'm gonna hold that in reserve for a minute and I'm gonna draw a small aura around the outer edge of this. Let me keep it pretty narrow. At least I'm gonna attempt that. Remember, if your lines are wonky, are them wonky, Cindy? Cute, cute. All right, let's put Sanibel in. You guys are going to love this. All right, so Sanibel is done like this. Easy peasy. Just start on the line, okay? You're going to make some scalloped edges. Back down to the line. Right? Not hard. We're going to go next to it. it. Looks like a bush, right? A cartoon bush. So we're going to go next door. Scallop some lines. Yeah. They don't have to be perfect. And just keep going. Whoops. Eh, it'll be all right. I'll put one in. Now, you can change these scallops to be larger, smaller, um, have more of them in there, sort of like. This, right? These can look whatever way you want. Well, not whatever way, but I mean, try to try to keep with the whole um, little scallop thing. And just keep going all the way around. Now, if you are on uh, in a space on a tile where you wanted to make this a fill pattern, you just add them on top or in the holes, wherever you want to put them, right? They're, it's very free. Some of you will not like that because there are not, you know, rules for what to do next. But um, this is going to really work well, I think. And by me putting these down at a diagonal, um, we're going to have our little lines that divide these coming this way. And it's going to sort of look like each one overlaps the one before. At least that's what I'm hoping. Okay. 
This has made the corners really easy to handle. I tend to like to make mine uh, sort of um, large petally, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. Again, these can look like what you want. Okay, now I have come back to the first one and I need to fill in this corner a little bit so I'm just gonna put another one right like this. Okay, now for the fun stuff. All right, so where was I? Okay. So if you're in this situation with this tangle and you and you are not sure what to do first, then I want you to go to what you think is the cent going to be the center point and and put a little tiny dot in there to help you give you some place to aim at, okay? Then you're going to want to carefully connect each one of these with your uh, dot and take your time because if you don't, then you end up with messy lines, all right? Here, see, pretty, yeah, keep going. So now my center is going to be here, okay? And I'm gonna to wanna to take my time so I'm not constantly encroaching in here even though I've done it a couple of times already. I'm gonna try really hard not to do it again. And if you curve your lines, you're gonna to wanna to curve them all, right? So that they all look uh, one continuous way. So here's where I'm pointing. So let's see what happens to these weird looking ones on top once I connect them. They stop looking so weird, don't they? Cool, yeah? I love this pattern. Now this one I have done before, but I have not done Septembies before. And I just think the ideas for, for playing with that are so, so many. I, I can't even get to them all in one video. So I hope you guys have fun playing with these. This Sanibel, you can fill a whole sketch page with this. So here's where I forgot to add an extra one. So I think I'm going to do this. Since I'm going to, you don't know this, but I'm going to round. And I'll just make me an extra petal like that. So I'm just going to keep connecting these to the point over by where the last one ended. Right? like this. What do you guys think so far? Is anybody drawing or is it just me? <laughs> I know you girls. If Carlito is here, then chat is pretty entertaining, I'm guessing. You put Nancy and Carlito together, and then we have a huge, a huge party going on. Get Lorianne in there, too, and we really got issues because the roof is coming off now. The only voice of reason, reason I have is, is uh, Nancy and um, not Nancy Pierce. Any of my other Nancys. <laughs> They'll settle you down. Thank goodness. Thank goodness I have some of those because some of you girls are wild and crazy guys. Yep, 
Now, in order to make this look right, I just did it this way, and that's fine. You can do what you want. So this is going to be an interesting corner. But see how all of them are still going to be pointed at the center point, except for this is done. Shh. Let's just keep going. <laughs> Oh, Allison, you are my crazy, my crazy Kiwi. Just imagine that accent with the crazy. Awesome. We've got our contingent of Aussies in here, too is awesome. You're just here to chat. Look. Yes, yes, Susan. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I am paying attention. Glad she can type better than me. All right, question, is it okay to draw every single petal instead? Uh, I don't see why not. You're going to get the same thing, uh, and you're right. You have a better result if you just um, go down as you would, uh, like with echo lines and such. I agree with you that, yes, you absolutely can. Um, that is absolutely fine. Susan... <laughs> <laughs> Christiana has a question. I love you guys. You're awesome. Okay, so my center point's going to be right here. Let's keep that in mind as we go. Like I said, just, you know, use your best judgment for how to make that happen. And uh, Christiana brought up a very good point, which is you can, if you would like, draw these like this. If that is what you wish to do, you may. You're going to get approximately the same result. And you, you can control a little bit better what you get that way. But I, what I love about this pattern is that um, sorry, they're saying my name in chat and it's turning it orange and it's distracting me. But um, what I love about this is how easy it is to fill a space with it and just go, just put your scalloped edges and go. And, and for beginners, this is an awesome, awesome tangle because you really can fill pages in your sketch pad with it and feel like you're really drawing and get some really nice Zen flow from it. All right, I hear somebody saying goodbye, Lynn, so goodbye, Lynn. All right, my point's going to be here. Just remember to take your time when you're filling your lines in. That's going to make a big difference in how cleanly you're able to accomplish it. Now here I'm just going to have to guess where my center is. I'm guessing it's going to be right there somewhere. I'm just going to point everything this direction. Okay. All right. So I'm back at the at the beginning, and uh, this is Sanibel. Now for embellishing. Yay! <laughs> All right. So um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is what I love to do with Sanibel, and that is to, to ink in or round all of these little uh, edges. I love doing that. It's my favorite thing. So I'm just taking these little corners out 
and putting a little ink in there, just making a little rounded line like this, and just putting some ink in there. And what this does is it just immediately perks the whole thing up. I always thought that that this was a little, this tangle was a little weak for me because I, I mean, you can do some good things with shading if you've got, if you've got the space, if they're large enough, but um, I just felt like, always feel like it needs more oomph, and I love rounding the edges on it because I feel like it does that for it, but of course, your art, you decide. This is what I'm going to do. Didn't I put the stopper in this? Why is this clicking again? Here we go. Hi, Alicia. How are you today, honey? And I left these as they are because then when I'm finished, I'm going to draw an outer aura around the edges, and that's going to be cool. Working and waiting for 5 o'clock. Boy, do I feel you. Me too. I'm just kidding. Waiting for my snotty, almost teenage son to get home from school. Goodness. I do not know what's going on with him. Yes, I do. It's called puberty. And it stinks, and I need to remember that. But I mean, I don't think I was ever as mercenary as that kid go. You know, he he is a mess. Yes, he brushed his teeth today. Thank you. He knows he's in trouble with YouTube already, so he's not pushing me very far. He has started talking to me with this sneer in his voice, like I'm less than, like I'm less than the dirt under his feet. And I'm like, I'm not, you're not talking to me like that. He is 11. Yes, he thinks he's 21. He thinks he should be treated like he's 21, but he sure doesn't act like he's 21. And telling him that just, you know, makes him sneer more. Like, I know nothing. I got news for him. I know a lot more than he thinks. All right. Yeah, mumbling. So, yes, that mumbling so you can't hear him thing. Oh, my goodness. Well, see, my thing is I think he gets that from watching YouTubers who think they rule the world and, and think they should, you know, because that's not me. But... You know, some of them are like, you know, they throw their money around or uh, Mr. Beast. And I'm not dissing Mr. Beast. I mean, he gives away good stuff. That's great. But, you know, some of these guys are just nasty. And I, you know, and every time I say I don't want you watching them, then I have to give a, a detailed reason. I mean, I don't have to, but he expects one. I'm just sick of, sick of it. Mr. Beast is an adult. You are correct about that. And I don't hear him talk to anybody the way Mari talks to me. <laughs> so uh, the kid is going to have to get over that. If, if Mr. Beast was all he watched, then we'd probably be in pretty good shape. But it is not. He watches this, this one uh, guy named Flamingo. I just want to... <laughs> I just want to, oh, nobody can bring me to want violence more f quickly than that man who pays, plays little kids' games and 
makes fun of the little kids in there because he thinks it's funny. Yep, don't forget, don't forget to like. Don't forget to like the video. Thanks for reminding me, guys, because I always forget. But see, isn't this cool with the rounding? I love the way it looks with the rounding. That's just me, maybe, but I like it. Let's come down over here so I'm out of the out of the camera. And if you take your time, it's pretty easy. Okay. And sometimes they're short and you just kind of got to go across the top. It's all right. And the extra ink here along the inside where they overlap, that's never a bad thing. And the aura this is going to make coming around is going to be very cool. I'm going to like it. Bye, Valerie. Bonsoir. Bonne nuit. Sleep good. Dream of us. <laughs> Dream of tangles. And have sweet, pattern-filled dreams. Do you guys ever dream of your tangles? Dream of drawing a tangle in your sleep? I'd love to know if you do that. There was a time when my, when my dreams were filled with tangling, filled with it. Not so much anymore. Of course, I, was, I take breaks now and before I was 24 seven. <laughs> Nightmares if she dreams of Carlito. That would never happen. Did you guys manage to get Carlito in the Facebook group? Is she going to join us in there? You don't have to do a face reveal, honey. <laughs> Carlita says uh, that um, she always gives a reason to her son. She says, my reason is because I will take away all of your devices until you do. I like it. I like it. That's pretty much what I do. You know, it's just, you know, I, I call them different things. You know, the first thing to go is YouTube, because that's what he cares about the most. Then it's then it's his video games. We've never gotten past that, because, you know, <laughs> he's addicted. That's usually, that's usually all it takes. There was, there was one day when he was eight, and he was so angry that he got up, and turned the TV back on after I turned it off. And uh, so I just got up and I went in there and I got the power cord <laughs> and pulled it out. <laughs> and we were done with that. Yes. Now I have the ability to turn everything off and I have that for a reason. And it's not because I'm a control freak either. Although I can be, I'll admit it sometimes. 
It's because he can be a little shit sometimes. And forgive me. Forgive me. I don't normally curse or use bad language here. But sometimes when you're dealing with a teenager, cursing is necessary. Am I right? How many of you guys have raised teenagers and never let a curse word pass your lips? I want to know. Because I want to go to school with you. Yes, it is important to find their currency. That's what Susan says. That's that's the main thing. You have to figure out what they care about. And then and then discipline without hitting can happen. Happens all the time in our house. I have never, although I understand the urge to beat your children because, you know, we're human and they're awful sometimes and they need beating. But Quite frankly, I don't see the need to hit because, you know, if you find their currency, like Susan says, then then you don't need to. You can deal in, in something that they care about enough that they will change their behavior for. And then you're good to go. I cursed through raising my ex-husband's teenage daughter. Oh, I bet you did. Ooh, and he's your ex now? Hmm. Good work. Good work. All right, it is time for the Aura. Doo -doo. Let's have some wiggly fun. Mari started smarting off to me last night with that sneer, and I was like, yeah, you can turn off YouTube right now. Why? Well, the first reason is because of the way you're talking to me right now. <laughs> and then, of course, later when I wanted him to get his chores out of the way, I used YouTube again, and I said, well, if you can get them out of the way now, then maybe I will let you have that back before bed. See how that goes? Currency. They do. They challenge you to stick to the rules. And you gotta. You gotta. They do. They question everything in puberty, and that's okay. That's part of figuring out who you're going to be as an adult. But, you know, I'm not going to let him be that hateful. I'm not going to let him disrespect me, because if he's going to disrespect me, that means he will disrespect his teachers, the principals and any other adult in his life, and that's not gonna be okay. You can't. <laughs> Nancy Gregg is telling a story that she has never cursed. It's not her thing, which is very nice. Um, but she had a coworker once that she just could not get to, uh, that she just could not get to understand her, and she just, Talked to her in her own language and shocked her, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes a little shock value is good, too. It is okay. He thinks it's okay for him to watch, you know, more adult-level things with, with um, cursing in them. You know, but, but once I hear the F-bomb twice, he's getting off of that, right? And because I don't want that in his head before he goes to school. And, and it is true that the more you put that stuff in your head, the more easily it comes out your mouth. Of course, he doesn't think so. And I didn't think so at his age either. How pretty is this, right? I love it. Now, of course, you know, operant conditioning works exactly. Exactly. All right, because I'm me, and you guys aren't going to tell anybody because you're enders, and Zenders, and Friendsters. I'm gonna take this pencil out. Just cause I can. These pastel erasers are really gentle on the tooth, so I really like, I don't mind using them at all. All right. <clears throat> Shading. Nancy says she cusses like a sailor. <laughs> I 
Well, if you were a firefighter for 10 years, you were probably around a lot of cussing there. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is shade behind where these overlap and then give some shadowing to the center-ish portion, right? Remember where the lines converge, that's a natural shading place. I'm sure there are some exceptions, but in general. So we're going to hit this like this. That one. Yeah, <laughs> Carlito. She says she cussed. She cussed at her kid, and and people would say how polite he was. You guys know that, right? Everybody always thinks your kid is polite. People tell me Mari's polite all the time. I'm like, sure he is. Sure he is. And on your first one, you just put some in the middle. Sort of darken that. Chat is just rolling on by. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Well, I'm certainly zenned out right now. I do enjoy shading when I'm in the right frame of mind. It's that wow factor. All right, so I want to now, I'm gonna go on the outside of this little frame And put graphite right there and I may come back in with my PN and darken that line and this is going to lift this middle um, square part up over the Sanibel I hope sort of make it stand out give it a new layer Now, I like to shade darkly. You don't have to. You can shade as you will, of course. Uh, give me just a second. Let me grab my tortillon. Yes, color will make a huge difference if I decide to add it. We'll see. We'll see if I like it. Oops, I've still got some pastel on this. It's all right.
try really hard to keep this off of your frame. I know we can lift it off with an eraser, but it'll never be as clean as it was before anything got on there. If that makes any sense to anybody. The little circles with your tortillon can really help you with shading, uh, making your blend smooth. Of course, that's going to really spread your graphite too, so make sure you're using that in a place where it's appropriate. So how is that Henri Cat Cassandra doing today? And Miss Purry Winkle, how is Miss Purry Winkle? Kitties are so interesting. I mean, I love doggies. Those are my faves, but kitties are interesting creatures. They certainly have their own minds, which I find fascinating endlessly. I might lift that line out. We'll see. And uh, she made she made holes all over your lawn yesterday. Cassandra did. Shame on her. Shame on her. All right. Now the other place I want to put graphite, or do I? I know somebody's laughing out there. <laughs> the next place I want to put graphite is right here to darken this. I'm going to go ahead and do it. If I change my mind, I can always lift it out if it's a problem. Um, I'm considering color in here. And when I mixed my, now here where you've got ink, be careful with how you scrub over that. Take the time to go in the holes. Don't just go over that. All right. But anyway, uh, I'm considering color in here, and sometimes the graphite can, can get in the way of that. But you just want to deepen that center portion. Boy, my voice sounds like I've been smoking black cigars, doesn't it? And I haven't. I should get some, though. It might help. Just kidding. Not looking to get cancer today. Okay, now. All right, let's blend that while I'm thinking. Hi, Angela. We were just talking about you earlier. Did you ever get in the Facebook group and get all set up? Gentle with your tortillon in there. You don't want to scrub up your tooth with the ink. Okay, so this is where I'm at, and this is perfectly respectable. I like it. Um, but we were kind of playing with colors earlier. And um, let's see, what could I use that would make me smile? Um, I do like this yellow, but that might be asking for it. 
Hmm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. You're all right. You're all right. Yes, Allison, what up? Yes, ma'am. I'm paying attention. What's up? Debbie, the name of the group is Cindy's Zenders. Gotta spell the name right. <laughs> Carlito, what is your question, young lady? Uh, I'm not sure. They have been getting about the same number of views. I think it's slightly less, but not enough for me to go, oh, we got to go back to making making the other kind. So, you know, I'm, I'm still doing this. Um, Debbie, did you have a question? <laughs> Pepper, nails on a chalkboard. That's right. My little tail. Or we could use pencils. Carlito, I'm still waiting for your question. Screaming at Mari doesn't help your vocals. No, it doesn't. I try not to scream at him, although it's hard. All right. Oh, that's what the question was. Yeah, I'm slow. Okay. <laughs> All right, so to color or not to color, this is the question. What do you guys think? Color or no color? Um, are the viewer numbers affected? Um, they're a little bit less, but um, oh, everybody says color. All right, well, if y'all are gonna say color, <laughs> Nobody's getting scared away from this crowd. What color should we use? That is the question. Let me think about this for a minute. I wonder what I have in this. These are my gorgeous pencils. This is, I can't, why do they always make this so you can't read it? Something red. Oh, purplish red. <laughs> that is a great name for a color. All right. Let's see what we got here. I kind of want a neutral. What color is this? This may be beige. Maybe more neutral than I want. It is, oh, this is burnt sienna. I don't think I want that. I don't want to go brown. How about peach? Do I have a peach in here? Uh, this is brown ochre. No, no, not what I want. I have to go to the third tier here. If I can grab a little tab. Turquoise and orange. Ooh, I like turquoise. It's a good thought. Ah, bingo. Here we go. Something ochre. Burnt ochre? Really? This looks like peach to me. Does that look like peach to you? All right, blue and green aqua sea colors. That'd be nice. So that's a really pretty red. Oh, 
Okay, Simba, you were about to sing, weren't you? All right, well. How do you have 75 colors and, and no peaches? And no peaches. Here's the pink. All right, orange and hot pink. That might be good. This is Anthra something rose pink. I don't know. Yeah, I kind of like these two together, that burnt ochre and the pink. But this and pink. That's nice. All right. And here, what is this? This looks like turquoise. Ice blue. Wow, that's a lot darker than I thought it would be. <laughs> Excuse me. nice this is the turquoise we were looking for there we go that would actually go good with that other blue so let's see how far we can get with this uh, the colored pencils I'm using right now are uh, luminance by um, Car Caron de Ash so this is what this is these are without hands down the most expensive colored pencils in the world right now. And they they have the very highest light fastness rating of any pencil ever, at least as far as I know. So these are gorgeous pencils. They're made from from uh, the kind of they're made from California cedar and the wood is renewable. So they're doing they're doing smart stuff with that. So I really I so far I have liked them. I'm not sure they're worth all that much more than than my polychromos or my prismacolors, but they do go on really smoothly. I like the pink and this purplish red together. I think I'm going to use that on my little Sanibel things. Bye, Christiana. Bonne nuit. Sleep good. All right. Your husband's going to be in Oklahoma tomorrow, huh? Me too. All right. So I'm going to put a little of this purplish red. God help me. I hope this goes well. Right in the center here. And I'm going to come in on top. With this pink. And I'm just going to sort of layer them back and forth. Are you being sent to bed? No, but you keep saying goodbye and you never leave. <laughs> oh, we love you, Christiana. Don't leave. You keep saying you have to go. And I'll just leave the tips. 
I'll just leave the tips. Um, chat is getting crazy. I'm just going to leave the tips um, white, at least for now. And I may use my blending solution on here. I'm not sure yet. In fact, I probably will. I may use a colorless blender on it first. We'll see. Or I could try the blending stick that is in the box with this. I really don't like to use those, um, but they are effective, I guess. The colorless blenders that come with colored pencils. Once they're finished, you can't get anything else into the tooth of the paper. So I think in Prismacolor, this would be close to the process red, uh, which may be a tiny bit lighter in the red spectrum than this is. I haven't blended this with solution yet, so I'm not sure what the true pigment is going to be like, although these are supposed to also be the most uh, heavily pigmented pencils out there. So they've got a big price tag. I managed to get a really, really like almost $100 off good deal on them by watching Amazon and got it through Amazon UK. Of course, I waited three weeks for it, but that's okay. We will see if they were worth it. In art supplies, it is worth it to put something in your cart and come back and check in regularly and see um, if the price has come down because I find that the prices on art supplies fluctuate a lot. Now, not on everything, but a lot. This is a great time to be buying Prismacolors. Um, the prices on those are, are fairly cheap, even for the big sets. But if you're not into Prismacolors, also get your polychromos. I need to get a bigger set of those. I don't enjoy using them as much because I don't always have the color choices that I want. So Trisha Farone is the one, is the CZT. I think she's from the Rhode Island area that, that came up with Sanibel. Um, Cindy, use Honey too. It lets you know when things... Oh, yeah, but isn't Honey just for um, um, computer browsers? Because I don't have a computer, and so I just use mobile browsers like Safari and Chrome. So, will it work with mobile devices, honey? Um, Pepper, are you talking to me about, about watercolor pencils? Crafter's Companion pencils. No, I haven't. Uh, who, who puts those out? What brand are they? I guess that's it, probably, Crafter's Collection. Um, I have a small set of, of watercolor pencils from Prismacolor that I never use, and, um, I love my Derwin ink tints, which are basically watercolor pencils, but they're a lot more, uh, they're a lot more soluble as far as the color blending goes. So I really love those. 
Oh, Spectrum Noir. Um, I have not tried their their pencils. Um, I figured once I had the top three kinds, do I need to do I need to <laughs> have any more? But um, I do like to try new things out and find out, you know, and then I can recommend comparable things to people. Um, because especially with with a with an audience that's all over the world, it's really hard for me to know what what to recommend for specific countries if if you're not able to get you know specific things that we get here. And of course, you know that's of course going to happen. And sometimes you guys have cool things that we don't get. Thanks, Phyllis. I want to see yours. I hope you will post it for me, either in group or on Instagram. There's nothing wrong with leaving it black and white. Black and white is awesome. You know, a little orange wouldn't be so bad. You know, orange would go good with this purplish red, too. Or a kind of a sun yellow or an orange yellow, something like that. Be good. All right, so um, I'm going to pause here for a minute and grab this turquoise pencil and wonder to myself where I want to put this. Of course, the obvious place is uh, in the center here. Uh, um, I have not tried the Dick Blick colors, uh, the colored pencils. I, ha I have their alcohol markers. So um, maybe Kimberly has tried those in chat. So this is why you don't want to necessarily put graphite down before you add color, because it, it really does darken out the shade, right? So I'm not going to panic about this because I'm going to use some, I'm going to use some uh, blending solution on here, and then I'll go over it again. And that will that will um, help. And I don't want it to be really strong. I just want a hint of blue. And again, try to avoid putting it over your ink. And sometimes you can't help it, but sometimes you can. I'm just kidding. Hi, Crystal. Thank you. Yay. I hope you have a good day, too. Crystal has been posting some gorgeous art in group. Good for her. I hope I get to see more of you guys' art. So I'm going to try. I don't know if this pencil is sharp enough. But I'm going to try to dot a little blue in these little orbs. And then I'll put a dot of jelly roll on top of that for an for a highlight if I can get these in.
Okay. All right, I'm gonna blend some of these. I don't think we're gonna have time for me to finish everything. And uh, I wanna get my blending solution out. Hopefully it's right here where I left it, not buried beneath this stuff. Uh, uh, nope, come on, Cindy. <sighs> come on, you can do it. You got this. I need to have less stuff that rattles around here. Okay, found the medication, that's good. Ah, yay. All right, now I need a clean tortillon, which this is most certainly not. I'm gonna be very gentle, let's clean this on all sides, gently. I just rub gently on all sides and I roll it as I go. Remember the wax paper trick if you want to keep your tortillon from getting all, all fuzzy on the ends. like this one is. Of course, I don't have any wax paper in here. So I have fuzzy tip on my tortillon. We're about to put wax on there, so it's gonna be fine. So I'm just using this, this uh, odorless mineral solution. And I'm just dipping my tortillon in like this. I know a lot of people have glass jars and pretty cotton balls and all of that. I don't. Okay, I just dip it in. It works for me. All right, so I'm gonna start with my outer edges here. Ooh, that blends gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna stick to it. Stick to the plan, Cindy. Just pick up this outer edge. And just sort of soften that a little bit. Probably should have taken that pencil line out, but it's there now. I'm not sure you can tell very much on the video uh, what a difference this makes. Let me zoom in a little bit, see if you can see better. Well, that's muddy. Remember, this looks wet, but it evaporates really quickly. So any spots you see that like that, uh, that aren't quite clean, we'll get there. Right now I'm just doing the lighter color. What this does is release the wax binding agent that holds the, the pencil in, in pencil form and lets the pigment free, basically. We are liberating pigment here. And I love that. Okay, now I'm gonna go in and get a little bit more on here. Okay, now I'm gonna go into this dark red here. Purplish red. Like I said, I think maroon or process red in Prismacolor will work really well for this uh, color in lieu of. Got all the school buses outside. 
and be patient with me. Can you tell what this does smoothness wise? Very pretty blend, I like that. <laughs> yep, Christiana's not going to bed. She's gonna stay here with us till we're done. This makes such a big difference with colored pencils is, is this releasing that binding agent makes a huge difference. I saw pigments in my Prismacolors. When I started using the blending solution, I saw pigments in there that I had never known were there <laughs> because I had never seen them before with a colorless blender because this really does unlock the pigments in your, in your um, colored pencils and set them free. Yeah. And the great thing about this then is I can come back over this with my pencil and the pencil is going to roll on so super smooth. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, now I'm going to finish the rest of those here in just a second, but I'm going to clean my tortillon off. Yeah, those pigments, they're in trouble. Taking them to pigment jail. <laughs> Kimberly said she didn't know you could lock pigments up. Yeah, they're in trouble now. <laughs> Get a little more and let's tackle this turquoise blue here and see what that looks like when it's when when we set it free from its chains. May not get a very good idea because I put graphite in here, but let's start with these little circles here. Sorry, orbs. I meant orbs. That they are not circular. I mean, they're a circle-like, but. Here. This also will make the jelly roll go on easier. Because it won't be fighting against that wax. All right, so here we go. Now this is a lot darker because I already had graphite in here from my pencil. Mm. They've still got something going on in chat. I don't know, those those ladies are, are fun. <laughs> Said tortillons, not tortillas. That autocorrect, I hate it sometimes, but then when it's not there, I'm I'm so lost. <laughs> All right, so uh, Zoom meeting, I can't do it tomorrow. What about next week, Tuesday? Will that be okay? Do you guys hate me? I've got three appointments tomorrow, and I, and I can't get out of them. Yes, Christiana, darling, what, what up? What greases your paper? Tortillons and tortillas are making the Congo line together. Okay. Cre please put two lines in there to make screws. All right, baby. Here we go. Your wish is my command. I don't know if we can fit that in these little ones, though. We're going to try. Let's, let's make Christiana happy here. 
Let's see if we can do it. That's pretty small. I'm turning them all different ways. Some of them are too small for this. And my hand doesn't draw straight. Usually do okay with the first one. It's the second one that's hard. That's sad, Cindy. All right. <clears throat> Oh, cue the dog barking. I hear screaming children. <laughs> All right, you should be able to tell in here, though. If I could get them in the center. Not sure I did a very good job with this, Christiana, but the point was there. <laughs> Now, uh, for me, I need, I need to do an aura here. I need to, it's a physical, it's a physical need. So here we go. I need to put in auras here. Because I just think they'll be cool. I can't draw them straight, but I want them. Love you back, Christiana. <laughs> oh my goodness. Could you please show your sketchbook sample again, the one with the Y in, instead of an X? Yes, absolutely. Now the pigments are, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not reading that. So yeah, all right, with the Ys. So let me see if I can zoom back out here a little bit. So you're just, let's see. Now what I found for these circles, I don't like this. I like it better when I draw the Y Excuse me for her rushing here. Or whatever it ends up being. And I put my orbs in and then I draw my orb around it. I f sorry about that. I find this much more, um, much more, uh, this works much easier for me than drawing the orb and trying to fit something inside of it. So that's the direction I do that. I do my Y shape first. But um, it's a good point in that you don't need the structure of the square or the circle to make this work. You can just work with X's wherever you want to or Y's wherever you want to, right? And you got it. Yeah. All right, hopefully that answered your question. I am going to sit here and wait until my kid gets here in just a couple of minutes and be coloring while I do that and see what we end up with, okay? All right, guys, thank you so much. Um, no live stream or no um, live Zoom meeting tomorrow, but next week, Tuesday, and we will continue the Zoom things maybe every other week. Um, um, until you guys want to stop them. Okay. So just a little get together and, you know, show art and chat and whatever you want to do. All right. Okay. So next week, Tuesday for Zoom. Okay. And here, I just want to really quickly show you. Let me turn this lamp. Okay. Whoops. I need, I need YouTube back. Okay. I'm going to go out of chat. All right, so if you go to my page, 
right up here. This is the community tab. If isn't, I hope Nancy Gregg is still on here, or or who was it that missed us last time? This is the community tab, and this is where I'm posting the links for the Zoom meetings. Okay, so uh, that is where those will be, and they will be on Tuesdays and do them every other week. Okay, so let me find you guys again. Whoops! Stop doing that, Cindy. All right, all right, here we go. So let me find you guys again. And don't forget to like the video, Angela says. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Click the like button. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. I'll talk to you soon. Look at that, we got 50 likes. You guys rock. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Thanks.